Hello and welcome to this lecture episode where we are going to talk about different export formats from FCP and we are going to see how shortcuts work on FCP. When working on FCP, if you know shortcuts for your commands, it makes life simpler. So we'll see the important shortcuts that are available on FCP. Command Z is the undo button. That is, if you have by mistake done something on FCP, you can press Command Z which will undo the last action. Command X is cut. You select a shot and you press Command X. This will cut the shot out from the timeline. Command C is copy. You select the shot and you press Command C. It will leave the shot there and make a copy. At some other place, if you want to paste this particular copied clip, you press Command V. Command V is paste. In certain cases, you need to insert a particular clip. For that, you have the command Shift V. If I have a particular clip on my copied clipboard, I press Shift and V. So this will function like F9, which we have talked about earlier. This will insert that particular clip on the timeline. Next is Control B or the Enable Disable button. If I have a clip selected like this, I press Control B. This will disable this particular clip which means that the I can see the clip here but if I play back I won't see the clip on my record monitor. I can do the same thing on the audio track. I select the clip and press Control B to disable this particular audio track. So if I play through I won't be able to listen to the track which is on A1 and A2. On the other hand if you want to enable this clip you select and press the same key again, which is Control B. Next is Shift N. In Shift N, we get a freeze frame. Say for example, you have a particular image, a particular frame, which you want to extend on the timeline as a freeze frame. How to do it? You have a particular frame like this. If I press Shift N, it will give me a freeze frame shot like this. So if I have a selection of say a few seconds and I want this on the timeline, I can easily take this and bring it here. This will be a freeze frame. M is the shortcut for markers. If I want to place markers either on my timeline or on my source footage, I can press M and I'll get a marker immediately. So on the rushes, if I press M, I'll get a marker here and I, as I've already explained that if you want to get to the details of the marker, press Option Command M. This will open the Edit Marker window for you. If you want to add a comment, if you want to name this marker as say Shot 2 and if you want to give different colors to your marker, you can choose from this window. Another option with marker is you can mark a particular portion within the timeline or within the shot, within the source shot. Let's see if I want to do it on the timeline, I press M here and I press option command M and I go to this. If I want to add this duration, I'll say I want this to be a selection for three seconds. So I write three. 0, 0 and I click on OK. So on the timeline I have a marker which is 3 seconds long. If I want to mark a particular portion of the timeline or a particular portion of the source rush, I can do it by using this shortcut. The next is the select all option which is command A. If I want to select all the clips which are available on the timeline, I select, I press C 
command A. It selects all the clips here. If I want to select all the clips on my bin, I'll press command A after selecting that particular bin. It will select all the clips that are present here. This is a select all option. Next is the most important shortcut, which is command S. This saves the project for you. You just do a command S every time you do certain work, say after five minutes or 10 minutes. This will ensure that the project is safe and saved. Next is match free, which is F. If I want to go to a particular rush from the timeline, say for example, there is a shot here. I want to go to the rushes or the source files. So what I do is I press F. When I press F on the source monitor, I automatically get the rush file. If I want to locate this particular rush on my bin area, that is my browser, I will have to select this particular shot here like this, click here and press shift F. This gives me the location of the file on my browser. Next is control G or the close gap option. In a timeline like this, say for example, if I don't have a clip here and I have a gap here, I want to delete this gap. That is, I want the timeline to my right to come and join this on the left here. So I take the playhead here and press control G. This is a close gap option. Next is the JKL key, which is the most important key for the editor because this is our navigation keys. K stands for stop, J is rewind, and L is play forward. Here, if I press L, this will start playing. If I press J, it will rewind. And every time I want to stop it, I will press K. Pressing L twice or thrice will fast forward the footage like this. And pressing J twice or thrice will rewind the footage fast like this. And every time I want to stop, I'll have to use the key K. Next is the P key or the pen tool. If I select P, I will automatically get the pen tool. Look here on the tool palette. If I press P, I will get the pen tool. This is also quite convenient when I'm balancing the audio. If I have the audio rubber band selected and I immediately have the pen tool and I can add keyframes and do a fade out if I want to do that. Next is INO, that is in and out. As we have already discussed, if I want to make a selection within the rushes, I'll press I to select in and I'll press O to select out. Next is U. Command U gives me a subclip. If I want to make a subclip from this particular source file, I'll select in and out and I'll press command U. This will automatically give me a subclip. The nature and functions of a subclip is already explained in our previous lectures. Next is the T key. If I want to see the timeline properly, I'll press Shift T. Shift T zooms into the timeline vertically. That is, it stretches the timeline vertically so that I can see the tracks properly. And if I further press Shift T, it will come back to the smallest possible size. And I will get to my comfortable size by pressing Shift T again. Next is R or the render key. If you have something for render, say for example, here I see a red line, which means that I need to render this image. I select and I do command R. This will automatically start rendering this particular clip. Rendering has different options. If you go to the menu, you have render selection and render all, which means that if I'm selecting a clip, it will render these things. The 
lines which are selected and if I render all this will select these things that is if I just press on command R it will start rendering the entire footage but if I press if I select a clip and press command R it will only render that portion of the clip of the timeline the next is W command option W is a shortcut for showing the waveform on the timeline and hiding the waveform so if I press it I'll see the waveforms here and if I don't want it because this makes the computer a little slow if I don't want it I'll press option command W again which will hide the waveform the last key in this series would be the Q key which is the quit button if I press command Q it will quit the application this is applicable for all Mac softwares in this section we are going to discuss about how to take your film onto another platform that is onto another format so that you can show people what you have done in this context uh, I must mention that there are two formats in which you can take your export one is a soft format and one is a hard format a soft format means when you are taking the file onto a digital system that is you are taking the file as a digital file on a hard disk or on a DVD or something else and the hard format is when you're taking it on a cassette either analog or digital so let's start with the hard transfers I press I that is in point and I press out till the point where I want the export to happen so I select in and out on my timeline then I go to the file menu and click on edit to tape remember before you click on edit to tape your hardware the camera in this case should be connected I'm using a fireware connection and I have connected a DV camera with this particular machine if I click on edit to tape this will open a window for me which is called the edit to tape window or the mastering window here you have three tabs the middle one is called the master settings or mastering settings here you can add a few elements like the color bar a black and a slate that is if you want a color bar to come before your video starts recording on tape you can add it and this is the amount of time that you want to give for the color bar say I want a 30 seconds color bar here and you can also have a reference tone with the color bar usually it's minus 12 dB for all mastering cassettes now you can add a black after the color bar you have the color bar then you have a black for some time and then you have the film so in that case you need to click on black and you also specify the time that you want the black to stay there for then you have a slate option where you can, you can add a text the text can be the name of the sequence or you can add your own text that is if I add final film here this text will appear on the tape for say 10 seconds or if I want to change it I can change it to 15 this section or the media section specifies the amount of timeline or the duration of the timeline that I want on my tape the other option is the entire media option irrespective of my in point and the out point this will print the entire timeline from the beginning to the end onto my cassette now let's come back to the video tab here you have to set the TC which is on the cassette that is the cassette already has got a TC and you set it here so this cassette has is at 0302 that is 3 seconds and 2 frames if I want to start my film here I will just click on this button which is a mark in button now if I want to take this timeline onto my cassette I go to the browser I click on the final cut timeline I drag it and drop it at the assemble box I leave it it will ask for rendering and 
when the playback is ready, that is my deck is ready, in this case this is a DV camera, I click on OK. And the output will start. If you want to cancel the output at any point of time, just press Escape. This will come out of the export window. If you want to come back to your timeline, just come out of this window and you're back to your project. Apart from cassettes, you can take outputs on DVDs and as MOV files or video files. So in that case, the process is more or less similar. You finalize your timeline, you balance your audio and you mark your timeline in and out. If it's the entire timeline that you want to export, select the entire timeline with in and out. Then go to file, click on export and click on QuickTime movie. This opens a window for you and there is a setting button here. The current settings actually takes the settings of your timeline. So if you are working on an HD platform where you are working with say a 1921080 timeline, the file that you are going to export with the current settings option on is going to give you an exact timeline settings video file. This is the format that gives you the native quality that is already there on your timeline. If you want to export at some other resolution, you have a lot of options available on this particular column. Say, if I want from an HD timeline, I want a DVPAL conver converted MOV file. So I'll click on DVPAL 48, say for example, and I'll click on save to save this MOV file. This won't give me the timeline settings, but it will give me a DVPAL MOV file. Including audio and video is by default, it's present. If you only want the video or if you only want to export the audio, you can do it by selecting the options here. Make sure that make movie self-contained is checked. If this is not checked, it will only export the part which is not rendered. So it will only play back on the computer that you are working on. If you take this video file onto some other computer, you won't be able to play back that video file. So make sure that this particular box is checked. You click on save and that's it. Your film will be saved as a video file. With this video file, you can burn a DVD with softwares like Toast, DVD Studio Pro or anything similar. Or you can take this MOV file to some other platforms, like, like you can take this on a hard disk, you can take this MOV file onto another studio where you want to take a tape out if you do not have the infrastructure present at the computer that you're working on. So this is how you export your final film onto different platforms. While exporting your project, you can also take your project timeline onto some other softwares. Like if you want to do an export for your audio designer, in that case, you need to export your timeline where you have handle lengths of your clips to your audio designer so that he can change the cut points if he wants to. Or your project may be required as a timeline for color grading. So let's see how you can do these kind of exports from your SCP timeline. In case of audio, what you do is you go to file and go to export and click on audio to OMF. You can give a handle length of say approximately 10 seconds and click on OK. So my sequence1.omf is getting saved on my desktop. I only have two tracks here. Let's go out of this and let's open a software which only deals with audio. In that case, I'll open the software and I'll import the OMF file. I'll import OMF. 
I'll go to sequence one OMF, which is placed on the desktop, and I click on import OMF. See, this will bring in my audio tracks as a timeline on my new software, which is meant for sound designing. The advantage here is that if I want, I can stretch this audio track and I will get information here. This is my export option for audio designing. In case I need this for say color grading, I need the images onto another software again as a timeline. So what to do in that case? For that case, I have to go to file, go to export option and either click EDL or click on XML. EDL cannot take text files or graphic files. In case of XML, you can also export your title cards, your subtitle cards, or your film credits, everything onto another software. So it all depends on the use. Be careful, some softwares may not accept XMLs. So let's click on EDL. This is CMX3600, which is the best known standard for EDLs. And I only want, say for example, video. So the target video is V1. And I click on OK. And I save this as sequence1.edl. I've already saved one, so let's replace it. It's here. Now let's go to the color grading software. In this case, let's choose color. I go to file and I click on import and I click on EDL. Users, desktop and sequence one. So I open this EDL file onto my project. That is, I click on open. When you open this, this will open a color project for you, which is here. Now I have the clips placed one after the other on a color grading software. Here I can do minute color corrections and specific treatment can be given to the clips if that is necessary for my project. This is the end of our series of lectures on Final Cut Pro. Hope this series will be of great use to you and you will make good films in future. Mm -hmm.